make electronics projects, I really encourage you to make kits for people. I drastically underestimated the value of them. Unfortunately, you have to adjust your prices. I haven't in three years on any of them that I've been making, but I just had to now. I ran out of inventory, so pretty cool stuff. Uh, and it's fun. It's fun to help people into the hobby. Today, I topped up the AC on my CRV and uh, because in the winter, defrost is used to uh, dehumidify the air and make your windshield clean. Well, my uh, my filler for my refrigerant leaked all over the place and took the uh, O-rings out. And well, that's the condition they came out in. Not electronics related, but a handy thing is to grab yourself O-ring assortments. These things are super cheap. Uh, eBay, China, so you can still get them and then have a metric ring assortment. And then you can fix just about anything at home. This is pretty straightforward. You just unscrew the coupler and this, uh, your insert is just beholden by that coupler and two O-rings and you're done. There's nothing much to it. Pretty simple to find O-rings to fit. These things are around $40 Canadian or so. Uh, two O-rings, a couple cents five minutes or so. Didn't take me long, just pick them out, use the airline, blew them up, done. And just like that, and a little, a little air tool oil as lubricant, and our coupler is back working as it should. So, yeah, snip, snip. So when it latches onto the car, it latches and seals, and everything is just, yeah, yeah. It's just fine. It's just a little, it's always been a little finicky. There we go. Perfect. That'll do. Good enough. Okay, another Raspberry Pi. And hopefully we can set this up to be an interface out in the garage for just that uh, extra monitor that I added in there. And that'll be, a, I think, a home assistant interface. So uh, this is to go to the monitor and a USB to VGA and we should be okay. And it looks like we're booting. So this is just freshly formatted and freshly set up. I'll go through the setup process and do the basics, but all we need is a web browser. And I don't know, maybe we'll add a webcam to it or something later, might be fun. This is actually working way better than I expected. I'm logged into my Home Assistant dashboard and it's fast. The web interface through Chromium is working amazing. I don't understand why it's so good, but uh, I'll take it. That's going to be perfect. Take this out to the garage, stick this to the back of the monitor, make a new dashboard for just the garage for my external cameras so no one can sneak up on me and away we go. Time to sneak out for a playtime. Oh man, did I pick a good day. Wow. <laughs> Check this out. <laughs>
Now I'm no expert and that's why I usually don't show my flights very often in these videos. And I haven't been a very good pilot, I'm still not, but I found out something quite interesting. If I burn more packs, only if I go out once every few weeks, I, my skills get way better, way faster. Uh, I'm still, I really still suck, but I'm noticing a notable improvement in my own control just from burning more packs. So I guess, of course, it stands to reason, but I guess I just never went through with enough packs, I suppose. I used to just go out onesie twosies and my skills never advanced. And blasting through a whole bunch, I'm noticing a change. So take that for what it's worth. It's fun anyway. And never fly your last pack. That's the offering to the gods and it keeps the quads safe. I don't know why. Back out to the shop. I didn't video it. Just hooked up the Raspberry Pi to this monitor. This is an ancient old Acer monitor I've had forever. And there we go. Uh, just opened Chromium to my Home Assistant dashboard. I made a new user for the Pi in case somebody broke in here and whatever. It doesn't have any access to anything critical. But that's right outside the door here. Uh, two views of outside the garage, my local weather, my internet uh, speed test, uh, another speed test, forecast, a little voltage warning because apparently that little wall ward isn't good enough. And then control of the resin printer, which is right behind me. There's also off screen uh, YouTube player, but uh, I just have to redo things here a little bit. The only tip uh, that I have for this one is uh, these 3D printed mounts. Uh, you go to Thingiverse, these are for tablets, for tablet viewing. These are just perfect for setting small keyboards on when you want to keep them out of the way, but still be able to type on them. Once it's centered, you can actually press buttons pretty good on it, no problem. Pretty cool, eh? That's a good use for, a good way to stack things up and have access to it. And I like a full-size keyboard that I can work with. I also tried to hack in a touchscreen display into the TS2. And there's uh, two that are compatible with it according to the board. Well, it turns out only one is actually compatible and I got the wrong one. But I at least got the wires run out now. You need both of these. Uh, it's a T24 or 35 or something like that, uh, TFT. So I'll, I've got the other one inbound and then I'll 3D print a case and mount it up. And then the TS2 will have a touchscreen interface. And then it's damn near the perfect laser. This thing is, this thing is a rock star. Nice and big, heavy duty. Uh, my favorite by far, the, like hands down, this is my favorite so far.